Hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our webinar, Excel Made Easy for Beginners. Before we get started, I just want to go over a few housekeeping items. So everyone is going to be muted. So if you have any questions, you should be seeing a Q&A box to the left-hand side of your screen. Uh, feel free to ask questions as we proceed through the webinar, and we will try and answer as many of them as we can towards the end. Um, if you lose your Internet connection, you can reconnect by using the link that was emailed to you. Um, sometimes you'll want to refresh your browser to make sure um, that it's working and that your Internet is, is functioning. Um, if you want to watch this webinar again, or if you have to drop off early, we're going to be hosting the webinar on our website at TechSoup.org slash community slash events dash webinars. You'll also receive an email with the presentation, the recording, and any relevant links that we go over today. If you're on social media, feel free to send us a tweet at TechSoup using hashtag TSWebinars. But like I said earlier, uh, the Q&A box is what we'll be focusing on today for your questions. So just a little bit about TechSoup. We are in 236 uh, countries and territories. We serve over a million nonprofits. Um, and so just to kind of make sure that the chat box is working, uh, we'd love to hear who is on the call today and where you guys are calling in from. So if you want to tell us where uh, you're, you're dialing in, in from today, I'll read out a few. All right, so we've got Alice from New York, uh, Sarah from Lexington, Terry from Miami, uh, let's see, Baltimore. Okay, so we have people calling in from, from all over the country. Um, I haven't seen any international folks yet, but uh, hopefully there's some inter international folks on the call as well. So it looks like the chat box is working, so I'm going to go ahead and move along. So uh, we partner with several technology companies like Adobe, Intuit, Microsoft, Symantec. Uh, they help you know, make our mission possible, and we offer you know, hardware and software either discounted or donated. Um, I know for many of you it is the end of the fiscal year, so um, you know, now is a great time to stock up on your technology products. So we'll, we'll share a link um, with this information. Um, but our, our product website, it's TechSoup.org slash Get Product Donation. So if you're interested in seeing what technologies we have available for your nonprofit, um, either discounted or donated, uh, feel free to visit that URL. All right, so I am going to go ahead, uh, just a quick introduction. So my name is Seema Tucker. I'm the online learning producer here at TechSoup. And my colleague, Lashika Phillips, is going to be presenting Excel today. She is an Excel wizard. Um, so I'm excited to introduce her. So um, just a little bit about Lashika. She is the Associate Program Manager at NGO Source. Uh, she's been with NGO Source for about two years. And prior to joining um, NGOsource, she had her own consultancy helping nonprofits with operational management, fundraising, and administrative processes. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Lashika. Wow, thank you, Seema. But first I have to address this Excel wizard. <laughs> That is hilarious. I wouldn't say that I'm a, I'm a wizard, uh, maybe a super user, only because I do use Excel every single day for about maybe 30, 40% of my work. I have to go in between and use a lot of different uh, reports. Uh, we use Excel uh, in our department for uh, reports, we look at uh, sales, we view transactions, um, so a lot of different, a lot of different things. But yes, like Seema said, before joining TechSoup, um, I did have my own consultancy business helping nonprofits and other uh, businesses. And what I noticed is Excel, it can be a little intimidating, yes, um, but I hope that today we can show you how you can feel more confident using Excel. And that's the goal today is for at the end of this, you feel more confident and maybe perhaps you will be ready for part two and then maybe perhaps you can become <laughs> the Excel wizard, right? That would, be, that would be great. So before we get started, now that I know where all of you are joining from, now it would be very helpful to know your level of experience with Excel. And I love this. Are you in a place where you feel as if you don't excel at Excel? I think you're in the right place. 
do you know the basics and need a refresher? You have some expertise, and maybe this training will help you kind of put together a training for your team. Or are you pretty proficient? You can do this in your sleep, and you're actually ready to take over this webinar. <laughs> so I'll give you a couple of seconds to, to provide your response. And let's see, wow, so okay, it looks like a vast majority of you do know the basics. Um, and for those of you who feel that you don't excel with Excel, then hopefully today um, that, that will change. So let's see here. I'm going to see if we can pull up the results. So as you can see, oh, there are a few people who can do this in their sleep. I love that. Some expertise. Many of you know the basics, and then again, some of you don't excel at Excel, but hey, that is going to change. I promise. I promise. So let's go to the next. I have one other question. Yeah, so if you are not aware, I actually did a webinar much similar to this last year. Actually, I think it was the exact same title um, because this is something that TechSoup always, uh, we're always getting questions and inquiries about Excel. So if you did, I just want to know, are you returning or is this your first time? Um, it's just really, really nice to see. So I'm going to give you a few more seconds to respond and uh, we will move forward. So it looks like, wow, this is, this is actually really exciting. So to the few of you, <laughs> less than 1% who attended uh, last year, thank you for, for returning. Welcome again. And for those of you, this is your first time. Thank you so much for joining. So let's dig in and let's do what you came to do and to see. So I am getting ready to share my screen. Before I do that, I want to warn you a couple of things. One, I am using um, Excel uh, 10 for, for Office 10. And I also want you to know that I am on a PC. I am not on a Mac. <clears throat> so some of the things and some of the shortcuts that you see that I will do, um, it may be different if you will be using a Mac. The other thing I want to mention is because I am sharing my screen, occasionally you may see a pop-up, um, but no worries. It will go away in just a second. I just want to prepare you before we dive in. I have one question. Is everybody ready? Are you ready? Please shout it out. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are we ready to excel in Excel? Let's do this. Let's do this. Okay, I am sharing my screen. And... Here. Okay, so now you should see an Excel, an Excel spreadsheet or workbook. And hopefully you would have seen a little black box just disappear, and maybe now you've seen another one just disappear, hopefully. So in front of you, what you see on your screen, this is um, a spreadsheet that I've created just for this training. And of course, this is uh, it's really simple. It's not a lot of data because I didn't want to overwhelm the people who do not excel with Excel and for those of us who, uh, for those of you who, are, who know the basics. So this is a really simple spreadsheet. And trust me, I understand that the data that you're working with, it's probably maybe 20 times this size, and I get that. Um, but again, for purposes of this demonstration, I wanted to keep it really simple. Are we ready? I think we are. So here's the spreadsheet. Here's one. And let me show you this. So this entire application, this, all of this here is a workbook. Okay? And as you can see down here, these are the different sheets that you can have in your workbook. What I recommend is you always have with your first sheet, I always recommend renaming this and letting this be your master information. And it will make sense in a minute. So in order to change the name of your sheets, and this is just to kind of get, get start to get uh, everything organized so you, can, so you can start analyzing and managing your data. So I would say this would be the first step, is to come down and just begin to organize your sheets. So I would rename this, and so what I did is if you go down to where the sheets are, you want to right-click on the tab, and you can rename it. 
my recommendation is to always name the first one maybe your master list. Because the goal is once we finish filtering and sorting our information, then we will take some of that information and maybe put it into a separate spreadsheet. I hope that makes sense. You can also uh, change the color of the tabs. So if you wanted the master tab to stand out a little bit more, again, simply right-click on the tab, and then as you can see here, tab color, and then we can change that. So as you can see, this is our agenda today. These are the things that we are going to talk about. I'm getting ready to show you some most commonly used tools. Uh, but what I want to show you before we do that is I want you to notice how this is the only toolbar you see. The only toolbar that you see, it, it starts with Home, and then you see Insert, Page Layout, Formulas, and so forth, correct? But I want to show you something. If you click on the Home tab here, if you click Home, then if you notice that toolbar expanded. And this is what I love. What I love is that for, for any one of you who feels as if you, know, you don't excel with Excel, hopefully you are familiar with Microsoft Word because you will notice that a lot of the icons and a lot of the functions that you see in Microsoft Word are the exact same thing in Excel, even the shortcuts. And, and I, I'll talk about shortcuts in a minute. No need to, to worry about that. We'll get there. Uh, but this is, the, this is the main toolbar here. Okay, this is actually called a ribbon. But I want to show you something. Excel is very intuitive because I have, this, I have this expanded. I have this ribbon expanded, right? But if I want to do something in my spreadsheet, watch what happens. It disappears. So if every time I want to change my font or do anything in this toolbar, I have to continuously go up, click Home, well, I'm going to show you a little secret, a little trick. So if you go to the Home and you select it and you have it expanded, if you move all the way over to the right, you see this little pin, like this little push pin? You can pin the ribbon. So when you pin the ribbon, what that does is it allows this toolbar to remain intact while you move on into your workbook. Okay, so the next time you are in Excel, try pinning the ribbon. I'm sure it will save you some time and, and maybe a headache or two. So we're going to move right into this, this section, the clipboard section. And again, as I mentioned, you notice that if you are familiar with Microsoft Word, uh, the cut icon, copy, copy, and paste, format painter, all of these are the same exact functions as in Microsoft Word. For purposes of, of demonstration, I'll just show you. So copy is when you want to copy information from one cell. These individual boxes here in Excel are called cells. And if you notice as I move to these various cells, notice this number here changes. I like to call this uh, the, the cell address, but it's actually called the name box. But that's, that's really what it is. So if we come here and we want to – let's copy this information. So we're going to copy this, and we want to move it um, over into this cell. So it's been copied, and I'm coming here because this is where I want to place the information, and I want to say paste, and that's the copy and paste function. If I want to – maybe have this information in this cell here, if I want to have this information somewhere, somewhere else, what I could do is cut it from here by selecting the cell, select Cut, and maybe go to a different cell, and I can paste it here. And so then it removed it there, as you can see, and now it's here. Okay. Now I'm going to show you Format Painter because um, for me, it was a game changer. <laughs> it was a, a huge deal for me. Uh, so I want to show you very briefly. So uh, and, and a lot of times in your spreadsheets, you will notice that there, for instance, your headers. If your header is maybe bold, and I'm going to use these functions here, as you can see, um, and maybe underline. And if I want, maybe I don't want this entire, uh, all of my data to be bold and underlined. I just need a couple, maybe a couple of cells. So what I can do is select the cell where I want to copy the format. Okay, so I'm going to repeat that. We are copying the format, not 
the content. So we're going to select this cell, and we want to click Format Painter. And now we're going to select the cells where we want the format copied. So let's do that here. And voila, that's the format painter. And the reason why this was a game changer for me was because there were so many times where things needed to be highlighted or underlined in various spreadsheets that I was working in, and I was doing that manually. So if you have been doing that manually like I was, you do not have to do that anymore, okay? So hopefully that, that uh, you like that tool and you can begin to use that tool. So as you notice, if, um, once we reselect that option, you can see that the formatting then goes away. That's how you remove the formatting. And again, same thing with Microsoft Word. We have our list of fonts here. We have the font size. You can decrease and increase your font size here. Um, this is where you would add lines uh, and borders to your, to your spreadsheet. Uh, and here we have where if you wanted to maybe fill or highlight, if we wanted to highlight this, this is um, a, a header, then we could select the fill color there. And if we wanted this to stand out even more, we could make our font color a different color this way. And if we don't like what we did, uh, my fa one of my favorite things is undo, this little arrow up here, and we can undo that again. Just a quick shortcut to undo is Control-Z, but again, if you're working from a Mac, it will, it will be different. So let me move into the spreadsheet with some data. It's down here in uh, Sheet 2. So this is the data that we're going to be working on. And I will say this, um, if you need uh, access, to data where you and maybe your team can play around with, feel free to reach out because I can provide some links to where you can find this information. So you can take the information that you learned today and maybe play around with it uh, without messing up your, your real raw data, okay? So let us know if that's helpful as well. So here is our information, and this is what we're going to be working with today. Uh, here with the alignment section, you can see, again, it's the same same exact uh, icons that you would see in Microsoft Word. We can um, align our text to the top of the cell, in the center, and at the bottom. And we can also uh, align the text to the left, in the center, as well as to the right, and that's how you do that. You can even indent here. This is what this is for. And then this, this um, icon up here for the orientation, uh, just to be clear, it's the orientation of the text and not the actual orientation of the spreadsheet, like landscape or portrait. So this will give you the ability, if you need it for the header to stand out, then you can actually come here and maybe you could, um, let's see, let's change it. So I want to make sure you saw what I just did. So with this drop-down, there is a drop-down here, and you see Format Cell Alignment, and that brought me here. So from here, you can actually do a lot of different things. But here I want to show you how easy it is to change this text orientation. You can just move this arrow that way, and I'm going to show you what it does. So it, it makes the text like that. Now you say, well, who would want to do that? Believe it or not, depending on the amount of data you have, sometimes having the header slant is actually better. It just really depends on what your report is for, uh, what you need this data for, and how, how you're using it. I, for, this, uh, for purposes of this demonstration, I'm not going to leave it that way. I prefer to have it just horizontal. Okay. Okay, so now we're at the number section. And I know uh, a lot of people have asked uh, me before, so what's, what's the difference? Why, why do we have all of, these different, all of these different options? So when you have general, it's no number, then, what, then Excel won't try to, um, it won't add a decimal for you. There are no functions involved. It's just a general, it's just a number. Currency will actually give you the currency symbol. 
when you use the accounting method, it will give you the currency as well as align the decimals and all of the numbers. And then again, uh, with the short date, it's just the short date, as you can see, an example here. A long date, as you can see, the long date here, time, and so forth. And so for here, let's, let's see what happens if I make this, if I decide that this is, this is actually just a number, it's not currency. So we're going to say general, not a specific number. So you see the difference? It's just a number. It's not a dollar amount. It's not currency. It's just a number. But we know that because the header is donation, we know that this is currency. So we're going to say currency. And so now we have our currency symbol. We have decimals. Everything looks great. Um, and what I want to show you here is because I'm very familiar with this data, I know that these are all whole numbers. I know that there, there isn't any change in any of these uh, donations here. So what I can do is select this column, and I can remove the decimals. And, and so that's just as simple, simple as that. Uh, moving on to styles. Now, I can say the only time I've ever used uh, anything under the style section, it was, it was uh, to remove I'm sorry, to remove uh, duplicates. I'm going to show you how. So if you look at conditional formatting, you have all of these different options. Again, this is for the very beginner. I promise you I am not going to talk about top bottom rules and data bars. and We won't deal with that today. We're going to focus on highlight sales rules. And from here, this has been really um, another another awesome game changer, not just for me, but for several other nonprofits. And, and I'm going to show you why. Uh, yes, there is a way in Excel where we can sort and filter, and I'm going to get to that. But using this tool here, I can easily identify any donors that donated more than, let's say, let's say $800. Let, uh, let me show you. So conditional formatting, highlight sales rules, greater than, okay? So I want to look for, did we say 800? I believe I said 800. So we're going to look for sales, or, or we want to look for everything that's greater than 800. So I'm going to say 800, and I'm going to say okay. Hmm, it did not do what I wanted to do. This is a great lesson because when I went to conditional formatting and I started uh, moving around here, this was the cell that was selected. So make a note of that. Before you do anything in Excel, be sure that the cell that you are working with and the cell that you want to work from or where you need your sum or your, your formulas work, to be sure that that cell is selected. Okay, so let's fix this. How can we fix this? Anyone know? You can chat it in the chat box. How do we fix this? Anyone know? I don't know. <laughs> so the answer is, you got it, Control-Z or the Undo button. Very good. Thank you all for participating today. <laughs> so let's do this the right way. We're going to select the column because this is what I want Excel to check. I want Excel to check column E. So now let's do this again. Conditional formatting, highlight sales rules, greater than. And let's say 800. And according to this rule, everything that's over 800, Excel says that it's going to highlight it for me in a light red field. <laughs> let's see. I believe it worked. I believe it worked. So now I have identified everything over 850, okay? So now that I've done that, if I don't need this rule anymore, if I, now that I've identified, maybe I want to look at something else, but I want to show you how to remove this rule. We're just going to go back again. What's the first step? Exactly. Select the column or the cell that you are working with. Go back to that function, and for this we're looking at conditional formatting and clear rules. 
and that's and that's it. So we're gonna I'm gonna move on to how to insert and delete sales. It's really simple. If you've used um, or worked in a table in Microsoft Word, then these uh, I'm sure these icons and that function uh, is the same. And, and let me address the, a question. Why do I need to use Microsoft Excel if I can create a table in, let's say, Microsoft Word or in Google Docs? That is actually a really, really great question. And the answer is those other applications, they do not allow you the add-ons um, and the other functions and tools that Excel offers you. So I always recommend, I mean, if you have to have something in, in a Google Sheet, and I always recommend doing it in Excel first, creating that workbook in Excel first, and then you can upload that into, um, into a, Google, a Google Sheet. But keep in mind the formulas and the different add-ons and the functions that you have in Excel, they're not all um, available in those other applications. So you, you aren't able to do formulas, for instance, in Microsoft in a Microsoft Word table. Okay? <clears throat> so let's insert let's insert a a row here. So what you want to do is to go to the row where you want to insert an additional row or, or multiple rows. And you can select the insert icon here. And as you can see, a column was uh, I'm sorry, a row was uh, just inserted. And the same thing with column. We can go here. Maybe we want to add one next to the donation column. And so I would go I can go here to insert and add another column. And to delete, again here's the icon here. I can delete. The other thing I can do is uh, right click after the, the row or the column is selected. If I right click, there's the delete option here as well. Okay. Oh, I, I, I just realized that I, I skipped over something. So I just want to show you something because I noticed that notice how the information here it's um, it's wrapped. I can see the entire email address on each for for each entry, correct? Uh, however, a lot of times when uh, I received reports, it usually doesn't look this way. It usually looks this way and information is cut off. And sometimes, and if you aren't aware, you can double click where, that, where the beginning of the column is here, and that will expand to the longest line or to the longest, um, to the longest line of sales with information in it here. But what happens is what, what if your spreadsheet or what if your report has to be on a certain size paper? Sometimes you can't, you can't display your information or your content this way. And so what you would want to do is you can pull, you can shorten your column this way and then select and wrap text. And so now the entire email address is visible. I hope you saw that. Okay, does anybody – we're not at Q&A quite yet, but before I go in, uh, before I move further, because we're going to start talking about formulas, I just want to see, does anybody have any questions about where we are now? No? So, yeah, we have a few questions that came in. Um, let me see if they are ones that you'll be able to – Answer, let's see, how do I select certain cells uh, instead of all at once? I'm not sure. Okay, I think I understand the question. So if you want to select, there are a few ways that you can uh, select a cell. You can select the cell by first putting your, your cursor in um, Let's say you wanted to. Let's say you needed to select cells four through seven, okay? And if you click on this, do you see this up in the top right-hand corner? This selects 
the entire workbook, okay, it, or this entire worksheet here. That's what this does. So if you want to just select certain cells, you just go to the cell that you want highlighted. I believe I said three through seven. If you go here, and then you just drag, drag your cursor, drag your mouse all the way to where you want to select, where you need the information selected. And so now I've selected all of that. I hope, I hope I've answered your question. So that's how you can select certain cells um, as opposed to selecting the entire spreadsheet. So this is me selecting certain cells. I'm just dragging my mouse over these different cells. And now this is me selecting the entire spreadsheet. Okay. Hope that answers the question. Yes, thank you. And then uh, there's another question. How do you make each column the same width? Great question. So there's one way you can do it, and if you just uh, Actually, it's, it's a really great question right after I just showed how to select the, the entire workbook. So you want to select um, this here where you can select the entire workbook. And if you just go to any column, any column anywhere, if you just go here and just click, double click, it will – oh, wait, did I do something? <laughs> okay, what? Well, Maybe I'm not doing something. That's what I did. So <laughs> lesson learned. You want to select the column, the columns ahead, not the – do not select the entire workbook. So I hope that makes sense. So let me show you what we're going to do. We're going to select the columns from, from the top here. And now if we double-click, it should give us – hmm. This is interesting. So usually, uh, and I don't know if I have, if I have something blocked or if I did something with my formatting. But typically, if you just select the columns and you double click, it will expand uh, and keep the columns the same width. But no, not an issue. Uh, let me show you something else. If you select the columns, you can right click and you can do column width. So I was trying to give you a shortcut. <laughs> And as you can see, that it's not working for us right now, which is okay because there's always another way with Excel. So please remember that. If you get stumped because you're not an Excel wizard, and I'm not an Excel wizard, if you get stumped, there is always another way. And 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 again, and we, I'm gonna give you some shortcuts in, in just a, in a moment. But so let me go over this again. We're gonna select the columns, and then we're gonna right click, column width. Now let's make the column width, let's just say 12. Let's just see what happens. And so now the, uh, all of the columns are the same width. Okay, so did you see that? I'm going to do it again. And you can do the same thing with rows as well. So I've selected the columns from the top here, and I'm going to right-click, column width, and I'm going to make this this time 20. So now you can see what that looks like. I can do the same thing with the rows row height, and let's say 10. You see what happens. So we don't like that. I can control Z, control Z, and here we are. So I hope that Excellent. answers Excellent. Yeah. Yes, definitely. There's one more question, and then we can uh, move on. Uh, I really like this question because I always have the same problem, but when you're printing, how do you make sure that you're able to capture all the data that's on the Excel uh, spreadsheet? Oh my goodness, that happens to me all the time, all of the time. And I promise I'm going to get to that. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to get to that, and I'm going to move on if that's okay, Seema, because I am. Okay, perfect. Okay, good. Um, such a great question. And, and I'm not ignoring you. We're just putting a pin in it. <laughs> like we pinned the ribbon earlier. We're just putting a, putting a pin in it for now. So I want to, because I want to spend some time with the formulas just a little bit. So take a deep breath. It is okay. You are about to learn formulas. And I'm going to show you how. Are we ready? Can someone say ready? Ready, ready, ready. Let's get ready to excel in Excel. Here we go. So the first 
a formula I want to show you, and it really is um, the most simple formula to use in Excel, I promise, and that is AutoSum. And all it is is um, self-explanatory to automatically generate the sum of certain sales. Okay? Are you with me? Great. Now, what we want to do, I've already told you that before you do anything, make sure that you are in the cell that you want to work from or that you want to work with. So in this case, and for purposes of this demonstration, I want to put the sum here, in this cell here, in G2. This is where I want the sum. So I want to give myself a header. I'm going to call it sum, but this is where I want it. And I want to add, I need the sum of, let's just get the sum of this entire column, okay? So here I'm in this cell here in G2. I want the auto sum, so all I'm going to do is click auto sum. And now I'm going to select the column that I need added, or where I need the total. And for this, I need column E, so I'm going to select column E. And now I'm just going to hit Enter. And that it, you've just learned how to do auto sum. If you have, if you said that you feel like you don't excel in Excel, then you've just learned how to do how to do a formula. Looks like okay. So are you able to see that? Awesome. So now let me show you. Okay, now let's go to the next. So I believe I'm having technical difficulties here. Let's see. All right, we're just having a little bit of a technical difficulty, so if you guys don't mind uh, being on standby for a second until we figure it out. Um, feel free to ask questions in the meantime, and uh, we will try and answer them as we can. All right, everyone. Thank you for your patience. Uh, we were able to figure it out, and Lashika will be back on shortly. Ah, thank you, Seema. That was a little strange, but hopefully now, hope you all can see my. Can you just confirm? Can you still see the spreadsheet? Yes. No. Maybe. I want to also confirm that you were able to just see how to how to do auto sum. Yes. Yes, yes. Awesome. Okay, I see someone said no. So okay, let me show you again. So we want the sum to be here in G2. So I'm going to select sum and I'm going to select the column. For, for in this case, I want the sum of the entire column. So I have that selected now, and then I'm going to hit Enter. And there is the sum. So you've just learned how to do auto sum here. Okay? There are some other uh, basic formulas here in Excel that I want to show you from this drop-down. So the next one is average. So if I wanted to get the average, what I could do, same thing. So I'm going to say average, okay, and I want, want the average here. So I'm going to go average. Then I can select the entire column here and enter. So basically what this is telling me is that the, the average – the average donation from this event or from this 
um, fundraiser, let's say, was $1,401. I'm able to see that very fast. There wasn't any math on my end or some assistant or CPA. We were able to figure that, figure this out in less than two seconds. So let's look at the other one. There is count numbers. So let's see how we do this. So the reason you would use count numbers is if you have um, again, if you're working with a large data set and you need to easily identify numbers in, in a column, you can select, and we'll do that here. You can count numbers. And so it will let me know here if I hit enter. Okay, well, did you see what happened? So it gave me that there's 103, so there are basically 103 cells with numbers in it. But you notice there's a, a dollar sign, there's currency symbol here. That's because this, is, this, still, this says currency. So I can change that, though, and make this general. It's not, it's not a number. Well, it's not currency, I should say. Okay. And I think that's, let's see, do we have, do we have questions? Yes, we have quite a few questions. Um, let's see. All right, so this one, I don't know if you'll be able to get to this right now, but when I download data into a spreadsheet from certain sites, it puts a space at the beginning of the field which causes problems with sorting. Is there an easy way to remove the space in front of the data in the cell? Yes, that is a great question. I hate when that happens. And <clears throat> do you remember when I showed you the um, the indent and decrease, where well, you can um, decrease the indentation here. So I'm, I'm going to show you. If you have, if you have information, you have text, and it's maybe you're saying that it's like this. Once you download it, there is a way. Let me show you. There is a way if you you see indent. I don't know what's not. You, you're able to move it over. I don't know if you were able to see that. Um, the other thing that you could do if you are downloading information, sometimes if you – it also actually depends where it's, where it's coming from and are you uploading it as a are – you, how are you uploading it? Can you give me just a little bit more information? Because there may be another, another trick to removing those spaces for you. Okay, we'll wait, um, let's see, for Heather to, to let us know. She said she's downloading the data from a brokerage site. So I don't know if that's something we can address right now, but maybe. But what she can do is um, provide, my, provide my email address. And, because I'm interested to see where, where the data is coming from and how she's actually uploading that information. Because there, there, may, be, um, there may be a couple of tricks that I can, that I can help her with, but I, I'm going to have to see that. Is that okay? Did you say Heather? Is that okay, Heather? <laughs> Heather, we'll, uh, we'll reach out to you after the webinar <laughs> to, to help you. Um, she said yes, thanks. Um, okay, so I think we only have a few more minutes. Okay, perfect. So if you want to so, finish up, and then we can try I, and tackle the I do. Q&A. Thank okay. you. So now I want to show you. So let's fix this. Okay. Yeah, because you want to avoid from doing what I just did, right, Heather? It was like this, and you want to avoid doing this. Yeah, I, I, I can definitely help you. We'll connect offline. Um, so I want to show you before we, before we leave, I need to show you the sorting and the filtering. Because like I said, the goal was we have this information, so now we need to sort it and uh, move forward with what we need to do with our, with our data. So what I want to do, I know that I showed you a way to identify using conditional formatting. Um, I also want to show you how to use the, the filter. So to filter information, you want to be in the, the row, typically in the row of your header. You want to have a header that really helps you to easily identify and sort and filter. And so you want to come here. Do you see sort and filter? And let's filter. And as you can see, that 
drop, those drop down buttons for us. And what I want to do is I want to uh, create or I want to sort, I'm sorry, let's filter anything that's less than um, to maybe less than 800. And if you notice, if you select this drop down, it, it's only showing me the amounts that are listed here in this spreadsheet. So there are only four amounts here. So I can filter my spreadsheet um, by selecting all or just deselecting the ones that, that I don't need. So I want to look at, let's look at the 250. And so now I have a 250. Um, I have a spreadsheet that just shows donations that were $250. And do you remember how I said we would start out with the master list and then move over? So what we could do is I'm going to go back, and I'm going to, I'm going to clear the filter for just a moment. And I actually need to, let to see if you all remember how to do this, agenda, right? This is now the master and now this can be our sorted. Aha, check take a look at this. This is definitely a bonus. We'll come back we'll come back to this. So this is our master information. Let's just add a sheet. Did you see we just added a sheet? And we are going to name this. Let's name this um this is our president's. I'm just making things up for purposes of, of this demonstration. But we're going to call this the president's circle. And that was for donations that were over $100. So now I can go here. Let's filter this again. And I just want to work with the information for $250. I'm just working with these, with these donations. And so now I have that here. So what I could do is to copy this, and then I can go to now, I have a, a tab for my president circle, and I can paste my information here. And so now I have master. All I can, what I can do here is clear this. So here's all of my raw data, and now here is my president circle. And so what we did was we filtered from here, sort and filter, that gave us the drop down option. And we took that information and placed that here. And the reason why I always recommend you doing this is because now you have your raw data and now you have the information that you want to or need to work from, whether that's sending emails or, or whatever, whatever the case is. Do we have any other questions? All right. I think uh, one, one thing that I think might be useful is, you know, you can um, freeze the pane at the top. I oh think that's a goodness. great uh, trick for people to know when they're sorting through their data. Yes. So that is actually, um, that's actually one of my favorite things because what I used to always say is, um, you know, again, I know that the information that you are working with is, is so much more expansive than what's before you on your screen. And so can you imagine if you are at row, let's just imagine this is 860, <laughs> and if your content goes all the way across this workbook, I know for me sometimes it's hard to remember, wait, what's this header? Is this the is this the amount they gave? Is this the amount they promised? What is this? What is this? And so then you have to scroll all the way up to the top um, to find out what that header is. Then you lose your spot. So what you can do? Great question. What you can do is you can come up here to View, Freeze Panes, and what I like to say is that. It really does. It actually freezes your pain while you're working on <laughs> your spreadsheet because you're not having to scroll up and down and figure things out. So you could do um, freeze top row. So if you freeze the top row, now regardless of where I am, that is still there. The other thing that I can show you, now this is freezing the top row. And we did this from view, freeze panes. 
Okay. Now, another thing that I can show you is if all, let's say, for instance, you just need to focus on the email addresses here and not necessarily you're not concerned with the address or how much they donated. What you can do is if you select the column, you can right click and then you can hide it. So that way, now you've not deleted the information, it's still there, you, it's just hidden. As you can see, we went from column B to column D because C is hidden. And to unhide it, you can select these two or select where uh, the column is hidden, and now right click and you can do unhide. And so it's still, it's still visible, it's still there. So I want to answer the question as far as what happens when you get ready to print and it's just not right. <laughs> that happens all of the time. So I always recommend before you print, before you print, always click on page break preview. That's just rule of thumb. Always check page break preview, a little tongue twister. Because what you will see is this bold blue line. You see that here? This is what is called the page break. This is where the page breaks, and you have the control of, of where it breaks. So, if, so I'm going to show you something. So I'm going to go to Home. No, I'm sorry, let me go to File, and we're going to Print. Because if you select Print here, you already get a preview. And you can see, based on this preview, the donations are missing. Do you see that? The donations are missing. So what I'm going to do is I can go back to View, Page Break, and I can move this. I can just move this over. And this is another page break here, and I can move this as well. I can move it. You see, and all, all I'm doing is putting my, my mouse over the blue line, and then what happens is I get this arrow. Do you see that? And now I'm able to move. I'm able to maneuver that and manipulate that a little bit. But this is going to be key. The other, the other key is to when you go to print here, all of these other different options, the scaling option, because I, I know this is very important for a lot of organizations that have a huge data set. Um, please know that this option is here for you where you can actually scale. Do you see these options? Fit sheet on one page. Now keep in mind if you fit an entire sheet on one page that the text could be very, very small. And I can show you what that looks like. Do you see what that looks like? So depending on how you need the information presented, depending on where the information is going, that actually may be okay for someone. But I know that, um, again, there are a lot of different ways and um, reasons that we're using Excel and the outputs and everything that we have to do. So and just be mindful of that. You do, have, you do have those options, this page break. You have the option to scale the page. So I hope that answers hope that answers that question. It does, yeah. So I think we have uh, just about five minutes left. So if you have any closing statements for our, our audience, and uh, we can let everyone go back to work in in just a few minutes. That sounds very exciting. So um, you got a little sneak peek of um, of what I wanted to gift to you today, and this is just my little handy dandy shortcuts. I told you that I was going to get to it. And, um, and so here, here we are. And yes, you will receive this. Do not try to screenshot this. Don't try to write this down. I promise we will make sure that you get this uh, in your email. So the, these are just uh, shortcuts that when I was starting out using Excel, and I knew that I knew that I couldn't excel <laughs> at Excel, and these shortcuts really helped me. Again, if you have uh, a Mac, these would be slightly different. These are all uh, PC-based, but I will work on getting something for you 
for those uh, Mac users. Um, so uh, again, thank you so much for for joining us today, Seema. Thank you so much for facilitating the chat and uh, working with all of our learners today. It is always, always, always a pleasure to be able to to engage with you all, and uh, it's just it's really great. So I want to now have a quick question. Would you be interested in a part two for Excel for Beginners? Would you be interested in part two? Are you ready to dive a little bit more into formulas? Because we can go deeper. Uh, we can go deeper into exporting. Would that be of interest to you? Are you using Excel spreadsheets on your website? Uh, how are you using it for financial things? Like all of those things. So let's see. Who wants part two? I can skip to a result. Yes. Looks I like believe. A lot of yeses. Oh wow! It looks like there are there almost almost 100 percent. So that is awesome. So then that that gives me work to do. I'll have to put some things together so that we can have a have a part two. So because you've expressed interest in part two, be sure to complete the post survey um, after this webinar because that's how you can give us feedback. What what is it that you want to know in part two? Were there some things that I could have gone over a little bit longer for you or some things that you could have cared less about? So we want to know. So again, thank you so much for joining. Thank you, Seema. All right, so just a few uh, final thoughts before we go. Um, if you want to go ahead and share one thing that you learned today in the chat box, it's always fun for us to kind of see what was helpful for, t for you uh, today. And then also we have a post-event survey that Lashika mentioned. So once you log out of the webinar, you should be able to see that um, post-event survey. And any feedback that you have really helps us, and it can help us decide what to talk about in our future webinars. So if you could take a few extra minutes to let us know, that is always great for us. And then if you are on uh, social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, we try to post helpful tips and tricks there as well in addition to general updates of you know, the work that we're doing. Um, and then also we have a blog, blog.techsoup.org, where we also try to post uh, valuable information that will help you run your nonprofit uh, a little bit better. Um, so if you have any interest in um, joining us for our upcoming webinars, we have one on 710 which is um, about getting rid of storage and uh, moving to the cloud that is hosted by Amazon Web Services. And then we have a library-specific webinar on the 17th about moving to HTTPS. So please uh, join us. And then we have all of our webinars are archived on our website. So um, this one will be hosted there in addition to, to the other ones that we've done in the past. So please check it out if you um, want some additional tips and tricks. Uh, and then lastly, thank you to uh, ReadyTalk, our webinar sponsor, and then also to Lashika who was uh, super helpful today. And I, I said she was a wizard, so hopefully you agree with me. Um, and thank you all for joining us today. See you next time.